Welcome back to these talks. Listen, as you probably already know, God is a great God. And He is so great that He can take us feeble, sinful, prone to wander in our hearts, Christians, and change our lives. I don't believe that God wants us at all to continue practicing some sin over and over and slipping and making mistakes. He's so great, He can even take us failures and make us successful. I want you to grasp that. There's a tendency, I think, in a lot of Christian circles and churches and all, bless our hearts, to think that we're supposed to live defeated lives and that we're just sinners saved by grace. He makes us saints. <laughs> sure, we can sin and miss the mark here and there, but not a practice sin and not continually. Hey, it admitted, admittedly, I've sinned, you know, and had patterns of sins for years. But I've found out as I'm growing that God has actually provided stuff for us. And we have to do our part, but it isn't that hard. You say, it's difficult. Well, Jesus said, my burden is light and, and all. And he says, come unto me, all you that labor. You're really working at it. Labor heavy laden. And I will give you rest. My burden is, well, take my yoke upon your learner me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest for your souls, for my burden is, is light, and my, my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I couldn't say it. And uh, that's Matthew 11, 28 through 30 or something. Last verses in Matthew 11. Read it. It's precious. Or how about 1 John 5? His commandments are not hard to keep. They're not grievous, burdensome, irksome. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And it's a faith in Jesus, is what he says. So uh, the more you get off of yourself and look to Jesus and his words and all, and abide in him, and he'll abide in you, and his words abide in you, and then all of a sudden you grow up. Now, it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight usually. Sometimes, like my mom, when she got saved, her temper was taken away. Her, her, her grandmother, my great-grandmother, her temper lasted for years. And she was a strong Christian woman. Yet it took her years and years and years to overcome it. But she did overcome it. So that's good news to you. You will overcome. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And even our, uh, and, and who is he that overcomes but he that believes that Jesus is a Christ? It's even our faith that does it. Faith in Jesus will give you the power to persevere and to overcome. Amen. All right, here's number 10. We're going to get to number 10 here. Quick review. I think it's important to review, review because the more you hear it, the more I say it, the stronger you get in it. Practice in to the point where you never have to do it. Oh, come on, Gordon, you're kidding. You think there's a, a time that you can actually overcome a sin where you never do, do it? Alcoholics can break drinks, drinking habits where they never drink again. Cigarette smokers can stop smoking. Uh, people who used to cuss don't cuss anymore. Lying can be a, a historical thing. Well, you never lie again in any sin. I don't care what the sin is and how powerful it seems to you. Christ is more powerful. And he, he offers you every promise in the book that you could think of. The <laughs> promises are loaded in the word. And he offers himself. And there's where it is. Jesus himself. And I say it often. I'll continue saying it. Why in the world does Jesus come into you? If Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, divine Son of God, dwells in you, if He dwells in you, then He that dwells in you will impart life to you by His Spirit. Um, what I'm saying is He can live that Christian life in you and through you. Here's His part, sort of what He does. He rescues you from it. He receives you and accepts you. He restores you and He revives you. He wants to revive you and give you power and life over all sins and, and all forms of death. You know, all right, here are the, uh, uh, the points here to when you do sin, you repent right away. You say you're sorry and turn from it. One is realize some things. One of the things you need to realize, as I've said over and over, is that there's an enemy behind it. If you realize that, that's more than half the battle a lot of times. Not that you're the one that's uh, not responsible. The devil didn't make you do it, but you, you are the one that sinned. But if you realize you're working against an enemy who's putting the thoughts in your mind, and you're vigilant, that's what this is, ready and all, and you're resolved to fight, 
then you'll have more victory. But also re realize some other things. Realize what his word says. Realize uh, where your heart is, if it's really committed or not. You know, it's, realization is very important. Resolve, a, a, a definite resolve. And you can't just do these resolutions and fail all the time. Of course, that happens. Don't quit resoluting, you know, making a resolution. And don't quit resolving to, to battle. You know, you don't just give up. Never, never, never give up. Never, never, never give up. All right, so you resolve, you keep doing it until you get to the end. Be ready, just constantly vigilant. When you get up in the morning, we go to bed at night, especially the times that you tend to sin, you need to be vigilant, sober, be ready. Hello, wake up, wake up, self, self, uh, self-aware, self-controlled. You know, be what, 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 like awakened. Okay, so um, resist the devil, resist the temptations, fight, ready to pounce on it. Nope, I'm not going to do it. Renounce them, like no, I'm going to say no to it. Um, and, and that they're your enemies in, in all. Repulsive, feel a sense of, if you just think about, the next time this sin comes, I'm going to be repulsed by it. Ugh, it's ugly, it's evil, it's wicked, it's nasty, it's poisonous. I'm done with it. I'm not going to touch it. Keep that in your mind. Be repulsed. See, the flesh or your heart or your emotions or whatever your sin is, has a sense of wanting to come to life. You know, it wants to be gratified. But if you're repulsed spiritually from it and you choose a repulsion, you go, no, no, I, oh, this is evil, then your flesh has no power. It, it, your flesh calms down. It doesn't speak. It becomes mortified. That's why the Bible says mortify the deeds of the flesh. Mortify your members which are upon the earth. Romans and Acts and Colossians. All right, so that's a repulse. Renew your mind constantly in the Word. Make a new commitment, a fresh start every single day and renew your mind with the word of God in your heart. Uh, restitution. If you have to, you may have to go apologize to some people and all. And you make restitution. Make sure you're right with others and all if there's a sin that you've committed against um, someone. You must do that every time until finally you don't have to do any more restitutions. You don't have to repent if you didn't sin. You don't have to uh, do a lot of these things or you'll just, you know, live in victory over it. Ten, I would say, um, and I don't have a particular verse at the point at this point, but be res be response, yeah, responsible, or if you could say responsibility, be responsible. Take responsibility for yourself. Don't blame others, and don't blame your uh, feelings or your flesh or anything. Be responsible. Act responsibly. And that's maturity. You know, an, an immature person, a baby, doesn't have any, many responsibilities at all. None. <laughs> you know, or a child, as they get older, they get a little bit more responsibilities. And then they get more, you know, clean your room, put your toys away, uh, brush your teeth, all these duties. Well, get, become responsible for your life. Be responsible for what's your thought, what your thought life is, what you're thinking. Be responsible for what you're saying. Control it. One of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control, is temperance. Let the temperance of God come on you where you're responsible. You take responsible for how you're acting or how you're feeling. You say, how can you control how you feel mentally? You put you fasten your mind on truth and your emotions will go along. It's like a caboose to the engine. Uh, the mind, whatever you focus on, that's where your emotions go to. Okay, it follows your, your mind. That's why it says we serve the law of God with the mind and with the flesh, the law of sin in Romans chapter 7, verse, verse last verse. Um, so it's real important to uh, take responsibility for your life and be responsible. And I like that word responsibility. Let your response be correct in the temptation every single time. Be responsible to lay hold on Jesus. Be responsible to flee youthful lust. Be responsible to, to watch your mouth. Watch, watch what you say. Pray that prayer, set a watch before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips, like the psalmist said. So it's important to be responsible. Take responsibility for, for your life and then be responsible. And be mature in your reactions, your responses to everything around you. And be responsible to make sure you stay away from things that's going to be tempting. If so, stuff that you shouldn't be doing, stay away from those things. Stay away from that place. Stay away from those people that causes you to sin or something. Do you understand? It's responsibility. Take responsibility for your life. Um, 
be responsible as a Christian and you will be pleased God and you will please God and you'll you'll actually have a walk that's responsible and you'll stand before God without shame or embarrassment you'll stand with confidence because you took responsibility for your life amen all right thanks for listening